Hi everybody, so this video brings together two previous videos. Video 1682, which is about three months ago, well, we do a lot of videos, and video 1784, which was a couple of days ago. Now in 1682, we took this thing, which is a diesel heater, and we pulled it completely to pieces. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video, along with 1784. But we pulled it completely to pieces and investigated how this thing worked. We put it back together and surprise, surprise, there were no bolts left over and it worked straight away. So, nice robust build, hey? It works on the same idea that the Bullyan or Bullajan, depending on how you want to pronounce that J, stove works. Now, the Bullajan, I'm choosing the hard J, obviously, is a Canadian thing. I mean, it seems that Canadians are, are more famous for bacon plaid shirts and maple syrup than I thought, and this Bullajan stove was a uh, supposedly, I believe, invented by a lone, what do they call, lumberjack. There we go, a lone lumberjack wandering around the hills of Canada invented this marvellous, marvellous stove. And what it is, is it's got a separate burn chamber and then there are pipes around the burn chamber. So you burn your timber, all the rubbish goes up the chimney and the air in the room that you're sitting in gets sucked in the bottom of the pipe, heats up and thrown out the top of the pipe and it's supposed to be amazingly efficient. Now, the outsider did something very similar with candles. What he did was he built a box, put some candles in it, set them alight. That box only vented to the outside and in that box he ran some metal pipes and those metal pipes would suck the air in, heat it up and blow it back into the room. The benefit of that kind of thing, of course, is no fumes at all. You're only warming the air in the room and the air in the room has no contact with the flame. The flame and the gases are vented outside, the air needed to run it is pulled in from the outside and it's complete separation which means it's like really really amazingly safe obviously and it's the same with the Bullajan stove, it does exactly the same thing. Well surprisingly enough that's exactly what these do. They've got a little sort of pot in there and you burn your fuel in that pot and it becomes like a massive glow plug. It just gets really, really hot. And then this bit, starting here and blowing out here, is just the room air. It pulls the room air in over that hot pot, blows it back out again. So you're just blowing air out. The actual diesel fumes are pulled in from the outside for fresh air and pumped back out to the outside through a little sort of um, flexible stainless steel hose that comes with these things. And they're meant for heating are these boats, um, cabs of lorries, that sort of thing. So they're meant for enclosed spaces and they isolate the air that's being warmed from the air that's being burnt so it makes them incredibly safe to use and they are really really good. There's only one issue with them really and that's you need to burn them on diesel and of course diesel isn't that cheap. I mean it's about 180 a litre here in the UK so that's quite expensive. Of course we looked at that in video 1784 where we took some old cooking oil. This stuff, there's about 20 litres of it here. My friend next door runs a pop-up restaurant and he produces this stuff like you wouldn't believe. Now it gets collected by the firm that supplies him with the fresh cooking oil and he gets a 10 pence per litre discount whenever he gives this back to them. And I said, hey, how about I give you 10 pence a litre? And he said, yeah, Rob, you can have as much as you want. So I bought this at 10 pence a litre from my friend next door who runs a pop-up kitchen. Now you used to be able to get this for free. You can't anymore, but you can still get it if you're willing to pay 10 or 15 pence a litre for it, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than one pound 80 a litre. Of course, it has some problems. One of the problems is it's used cooking oil, so it's full of crud. But in 1784, we took this, we clarified it with gelatin, added 20% paraffin to it, and we got this. This is a mock diesel. It kind of because it's cooking oil, sort of a biofuel if you like, there is some paraffin in that. Paraffin brings that price up to around about 40 pence a litre. So that is a huge reduction in the price of the fuel that you want and to And the burn. big question, will this run on this? Well, let's find out. 
So to set this thing up, I mean, it comes with a book with pretty pictures. It's really easy. Hey, there's an intake and air take hose right there. That's where the air going into the burn chamber comes in. For that, use this bit of stainless steel pipe, and then there's a little catalytic converter for the air out, for the air in. There's a little snorkel, and that goes into the air in. Those two have to go to the outside of whatever it is you're trying to heat. The rest of it is just sucked in from the room. That's where it gets blown out, and the back here is a fan where it gets sucked in. Because the burn chamber is isolated, you don't have nearly the same issues. And of course, we did that tear, tear down, and you can see how easy it would be to clean that burn chamber out if it gets coked up. But the report on this stuff, because remember I took this stuff from a patent, is this stuff will burn for hours, no problem at all, as long as the diesel burner you're using it in is slightly older so it won't work in new cars particularly because new cars are a bit more stringent requirement but it works in older cars and the patent ran it on I think it was a Peugeot 205 or 206 for 3,000 miles or something so you're gonna be able to put it into one of these and burn it because it's so simple in its construction and if you need to clean it it's really easy to do that as well so you're probably gonna to have to clean it every I don't know a complete a ballpark figure every 5,000 hours or something just add your fuel into the fuel fill-up where you would normally add your diesel. And then we're ready to go. So let's get it hooked up to an electricity supply because this thing does run on 12 volts. And turn it on. Okay, so I brought it outside, hooked it up to a car battery and we've got it running now. I was going to do it inside and then I thought, well, let's give it a bit more air and a bit more room. And we're going to run it for, say, half an hour, an hour, and we'll see how it goes. But at the moment, it's blasting out the heat. We've got a clean exhaust. There's no smell, which is surprising me. But let's run it for a while and see what happens. So here's a view of the exhaust. The exhaust port is right there. You have a look, see if you can see any exhaust. I was going to put the... Um, piping on it but I thought no we won't have a look at the exhaust and and well that's a clean burn okay that's been running for a good half hour and, and nothing you know it's still belting out the heat I meant to point out it does also come with this thing which is of course a metal expanding tube so that outlet can be well, point it anywhere you want, really. So if you're still worried about having something like this on the inside, well, put it on the outside and run that into your inside and you'll just get hot air coming out of that outlet. Now, that's really cool. Now, this does qualify under the UK laws as a portable heater. So it doesn't have the same restrictions that you would have trying to do it as a fixed heater. Of course, we have only run this thing for about an hour in total uh, on our new fuel mix and for a really good idea about how it's going to go, we'd need to run it for, say, I don't know, two, three months and then pull it apart again, have a look at that burn chamber. We may well do that, but you won't get that video for, uh, I don't know, February, March time so that we can see. But certainly on the time that we ran it, it started, it pumped, it ran, the heat came out, and there was no problems whatsoever. Okay, I have to say, that was pretty impressive. I mean, our homemade fuel came in at somewhere between 30 and 50 pence a litre. Depends how much paraffin you put into it. Now, on this one, I used an 80% mix of oil and 20% of paraffin because I was a bit worried about the viscosity. Because what you worry about here, of course, is the first thing is fuel pump. The pump's got to be able to pump that fluid and I was worried it might be a bit thick so I thinned it down a little bit more making it a little bit more expensive obviously but pumps really easily the other thing you're going to be worried about is completeness of burn because if it's burning in completely then of course it's going to coke everything up inside and means you're going to have to clean it an awful lot more but as we could see the exhaust was invisible and that's a sure sign that we're getting a complete burn there and the other thing people are probably going to worry about is the smell and there wasn't any smell until I turned it off. When I turned it off, there was still a bit of fuel in there that wasn't getting burnt, and of course that was evaporating and we got the infamous chip shop smell. But while it was burning, nothing at all. Now I ran this off a car battery because it was outside, and of course you could just plug it into a wall adapter pumping out about three volts. As far as performance of this is going to be concerned, well, you're going to find that data on the uh, manufacturer's 
website or the place where you buy it they're going to tell you how much heat how many liters it uses how much energy it uses for producing that heat that's going to change from model to model to model these are incredibly popular and i can see why i mean it was an absolute breeze to use i put the fuel in here and i pressed the on button and we got instant heat turn it off press the off button you have to leave it because the fan will run a bit because remember this bit gets super hot and so the fan runs a bit to cool it down and you need to leave it to cool down a little bit but it does that automatically and all of that's going to vary from model to model but the basic idea which is uh, the Bullajan idea or, or the outsider's idea and the cheapness of the fuel makes this, I think, a super viable alternative. And I have to say, I was pretty pleased with that. So I thought I would share it with you because, of course, it's a great way of keeping warm and not spending too much money on something like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have ideas about how to use it, of course, post them in the comments because any help is always a great help and people love reading those comments for people's suggestions and ideas. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.